Hello everyone, welcome to the Medical Zone. In this video we will have a look at some of the basics of magnetic resonance imaging, abbreviated and more commonly known as MRI. By use of MRI you are able to visualize detailed anatomy in all three planes, so axial, sagittal and coronal. The MRI uses a technique called nuclear magnetic resonance and its function is actually based on the magnetization properties of certain atomic nuclei within the body. Hydrogen nuclei, or just protons, are present in water, which is very abundant in the human body. MRI can use the proton's natural magnetic properties. A proton behaves like a small magnet, spinning on its randomly aligned axis. So what MRI scanners actually do? They create a magnetic field, of which the strength is measured in Tesla. In the MRI, strong magnets produce a magnetic field that forces all proton axes in the body to align with it. Before this field is present, protons are pointing in random directions. When the proton axes are aligned with the field, a radio frequency current is then pulsed through the patient. Stimulation of the protons will lead to a spin out of equilibrium against the pull of the magnetic field. The radio frequency current that is needed to create the spin is dependent on the chosen element, and most often this is hydrogen, and the magnetic field strength. After the radio frequency pulse, the protons realign with the magnetic field, and this is called relaxation. During this realignment, an energy signal is emitted which can be detected by sensors. The amount of energy released and the time it takes for the proton to realign with the magnetic field depends on the environment and the nature of the molecules. So faster proton realignment will create a brighter image. The magnetic properties can therefore be used to tell the difference between various types of tissues. Alright, these were somewhat simplified basics, but I will now go more into detail. So if you are not interested in any more details, you can just stop the video here. Alright, let's go on. Actually, it's more complicated than I just explained. When the magnetic field is applied, the axes of the protons are not just lining up with the magnetic field, but an external magnetic field will produce a kind of secondary spin or wobble of the proton's axis around the MRI's magnetic field. So let's have a look at a single proton. Here you can see it's pointed in a random direction. And now, when the magnetic field is applied, the axis of the proton will spin around this field vector, and this is called precession. Also, after applying the magnetic field, a small percentage of the proton's axis are pointing towards the opposite direction, so against the field. This is because protons are just very weak magnets, but it's important to remember that the net orientation is alignment with the field. Some more definitions that you may come across are the T1 relaxation, this is also called longitudinal relaxation and also spin lattice relaxation. This is the time to restore the axis from a perpendicular alignment to the magnetic field to a parallel alignment to the magnetic field. Protons in different tissues relax at different rates, so they all have their own T1 relaxation graph. And the clinical use of this is on a T1 weighted MRI, CSF is dark and blood and fat are bright. Also there's something called T2 relaxation, this is transverse relaxation or also spin-spin relaxation. Immediately after the RF pulse, so the radio frequency pulse, all the spinning protons are exactly in phase. Almost immediately they lose coherence as some spin slightly faster than the others. So the result is that the XY component of the magnetic factor decreases exponentially. And XY is the perpendicular plane. The clinical use of this, on a T2 weighted MRI, fat is intermediate bright and fluid and CSF is bright. Finally, you could also add contrast agents. These create additional contrast to the MRI scan. They are most commonly used for enhancement of vessels in angiography or for brain tumor enhancement in case of blood-brain barrier disruption. Most commonly these agents are gadolinium-based. 
There are also other MRI methods that you could use, such as proton density weighted MRI, and specific types of MRI such as diffuse, functional, etc. But for the purpose of this video I will not go in further detail. So yeah, I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, remarks or suggestions for new videos, please leave a comment below. Also, this is the first video that I'm actually speaking in myself. I've noticed quite some feedback about the audio in my previous videos, which made me decide to use my own voice instead. One of the reasons for me not talking in the previous videos includes a lack of a good microphone, so please let me know what you think of the sound quality, and also whether I should continue making my videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you soon in another video.